This is the third episode of uh, Kettlebell Sport Long Cycle Introduction and today we'll move to the second unit uh, jerk. By the last episode we covered the first unit of the long cycle which was a clean to the rack and if you're interested to watch it you can click the link below but today we'll start with the fast number 8, 30. First dip, that's basically a preparation for bump, and it's very important to make it right. And uh, first of all, what you should think about is uh, to don't lose the connection of your elbows and on your pelvis. And um, again, well, we started uh, with the rack fixation, right? Uh, that's how clean the rack finish. And well, next we'll move to uh, the first dip. And again, when we on the rack position. And it's better to show from the side view that we're keeping our balance <coughs> the way that all uh, we all weight on our elbows under our elbow, elbows. We're not carrying the weight on our chest. Yeah, that's what we was talking about last time. So all weight of the belt under the elbows, legs straight, uh, shoulders. Well, uh, not loaded with weight. Yeah, we can say that it's relaxed, but for sure we don't carry the weight of the belts on our chest and our shoulders. It's just touching. Uh, body of the bell for balance So that's the direct position And when we go to the first dip, we shouldn't uh, change any proportions of this balance So that's how the first dip will looks like <clears throat> And you see what I'm doing. I'm just bent my legs Well and knees move forward. So this way pelvis stays under my elbows and that's how I still keeping a very good and solid connection of my elbow and of my pelvis and actually a good sign well the sign of the good first dip if even you feel a bit of stretching in your low back not a tension so that's a good first dip because uh, well, one of the mistake in the way is to do first dip when we start to lean back and move the weight on our chest with kind of idea to then push it from the chest but that's how uh, low back uh, will get tighter and tighter and it will be harder to breathe because again you're carrying the weight on your chest so uh, I don't recommend to do bump this way so again from the right position what you should do is keep the whole weight under your elbow still bend your legs keep pelvis under the elbows and feel the nice stretching of the low back when we go to first dip even we move our knees forward, we still feel the weight on the on our heels. Uh, it don't mean that we uh, move weight to our toes when we move knees forward. No, we still stand solid on our heels and load our legs. And it's actually good to feel the weight of the bells, actually how heavy or light it is uh, by your legs when you're on the first dip. You shouldn't skip this fast. Because actually one of the well, mistakes I think when athletes trying to make this first dip quick and basically bounce the elbows something like this so they basically kind of losing elbows for a moment on the way down to the first dip and then bump these elbows and uh, well this style not allows you to feel actual weight of the belt and that's why the effort and strength of your bump is red now. So when your legs don't know how heavy these elbows with bells, so which um, effort they will make, right? So that's why it's always will feel a bit weird, or it will be too much, or it will be not enough. So that's why I recommend to keep your elbows connected, and again have all weight of the bell under your elbows. And when you will be on this on the bottom of the first dip, your legs, your body will know exactly like how much work uh, they should make to make this bells fly and I think that's how your bump will be very accurate and well as, as uh, it should be I will show you now how it looks with cannibals that's our right position, legs straight as I said we feel weight of the bells under our elbows this is the shoulders check, 
that no weight on our shoulders and again when we're ready to go to the first dip that's what we do same shoulder check it's not overloaded all weight under our elbows elbows stand solid on our pelvis i'm standing solid on, on my heels and my balance uh, yeah under my heels i'm not leaning back i don't feel weight on, on my low back on my chest it's like this and actually that's a good exercise when you're just trying to uh, stop a little bit longer in the first dip and just feel how your legs start to get burn and tired that's a good sign of the first dip but don't feel any tension in your upper body feel like you can breathe normally you can talk normally as i uh, do now front view of the first dip <clears throat> so again that's a rack position when our legs straight shoulders relax and first dip Very solid rack position, elbows stable on our pelvis, staying on our heels. And when the first dip is done, it's time to do the bump, uh, fast number nine. For effective bump, you need your quads. Uh, you don't need your low legs. And that's, again, why I was mentioned before that we should stay stable and solid on our heels. Uh, connection of, good connection of the heels to the ground means that your, your quads are in charge. If you disconnect your heels, it means that your low legs are in charge. And, uh, well, you, you will not be able to use fully the benefits of your quads. So make sure that your heels connected to the ground and that means that you'll be able to do a good bump and uh, when you're ready to use it uh, I name it like a, you should make a full size bump which means that you should uh, push your elbows as far uh, as your legs can go well I mean as, as long as your legs so you should completely straight your legs that's how you'll use all benefit uh, of it then you will use the whole potential of your of your quads because if you will uh, kind of just kick your elbows a little bit and elbows will disconnect it from your pelvis when legs are not straight yet it means that well you didn't put the all energy in it and that's how well it's probably will least for a little bit uh, for for a first few reps first few minutes but you will feel it by the end of the set so make sure that you do a perfect knee lock by the end of the bump <coughs> so that's how your pelvis can follow and lead the elbows up well as, as far as it can and well after that well uh, elbows start continue uh, to fly well and it will be the time for next fast for the second I will demonstrate you a few bumps actually also a good exercise uh, to do just practicing and trying to <coughs> feel this fly of the bells and feel no tension in your arms front view you see important to keep your elbows together don't let your elbows fly to the outside keep them narrow and close to each other direct them forward not to the side
very important thing to say is how you should feel your bell when you do the bump. And there were actually even some problem uh, for beginners and uh, some forearm discomfort. And mostly because of just a wrong way to well to keep the bell on the right position and uh, doing bump. Uh, because we can see that uh, the body of the bell is lying on our forearm But that's not where we feel the weight of the bell and uh, <clears throat> if you will start to kind of yeah, uh, Enjoying this the type of the right position and even kind of uh, let the forearm lean a little bit and carrying the weight here on your forearm uh, Well, that's ca what can cause um, um, problems and bruises here so uh, what you should do is uh, you should balance your forearm the belt the way that the most weight you will feel under your forearm, uh, well uh, under uh, above your wrist under your palm here. That's where the most of the weight of the belt and other points of connection uh, just for stabilization. But that's where the all weight. So your forearm bone should feel a pressure from the top not from the side and that's how actually even the forearm bone will be safe especially when you do bump <laughs> so you should imagine that you lead your hand handle of the bell up and that's what bring the whole bell up you're not pushing the body of the bell <clears throat> and you're not pushing it by your forearm because if you will do so well, that's how it will be a side pressure to your forearm bone and well, there is a risk to put some damage on it So you want to keep the vertical pressure. So that's why again, just uh, Lead the handle up of the belt I want to show you a visualization uh, example and if you will imagine that that's your uh, forearm uh, bones. Well, there's actually two of them, but uh, yeah, let's say there's the bone. And uh, if we apply the vertical pressure on it, you see it's quite firm and stable. So I can say we can, we can load quite a lot on the top of it. But imagine if you put the load right on the middle. You see, it's, it's easy to bend it. <clears throat> and if it's fragile, so well that's how you can you can even broke it so again just apply the weight and force on the on the top of the bone and make sure that it's go through it vertically that's how well you will not have any discomfort in your forearm we'll demonstrate you a few repetitions again <laughs> uh, <clears throat> same story with two bells feels that you want to lead handles up and uh because of that, you will want to keep your elbows pretty much under your forearms. Because, again, if you will try to uh, push the body of the bell by your forearms, that's actually why your elbows will get wide. You know, something, something like, uh, like this. Well, I'm not a great uh, demonstrator of the technique uh, that I feel uh, wrong, uh, but Again, uh, you don't want to push the body of the belt, and you actually also don't want to push it with your with your shoulder when you disconnect your elbows or by your biceps. It's nothing about the body of the belt. That's about the handle. So you're holding the handles by your hands, and I said that's all weight right above your wrist, and that's that's how you uh, lift the belts up. You just push the handles, and bell follow. After the bump is done, it's time to move to the next fast, number 10, second dip. These two phases are very connected to each other. The bump and the second dip, and depends on each other. There is always a balance between, uh, between them. Because, uh, uh, well, finally, by the end of the second dip, we want to catch and stabilize two bells over the head and keep the arm straight that's actually the whole mission and target 
um, of the bump and the second dip uh, catch the bells on your straight arms and uh, you're always kind of balancing the bump and the second dip and if your bump is not strong enough then you probably should go to the second dip faster and deeper or opposite if you feel very solid and confident uh, in your bump then probably second dip can be a bit shorter and that's actually also depends on um, on the weight of the bells uh, because obviously when bells lighter so of course it's a bit less force you need uh, to bump these bells and uh, well so and react by the second dip I will repeat it again because it's very important the main mission of the bump and the second dip to catch bells over your head with completely straight arms and lock elbows uh, that's why we well I'm talking uh, now about all this like uh, specific of the of the bump and the second dip only for this one main reason because if we will uh, will not straight our arms that's how upper body will start to do the work and that's the worst thing can happen during your uh, jerk set or, or your long cycle set right after you did the bump it's time for you to go to the second dip <clears throat> and as I was mentioned before you should have uh, apply a full size bump when you straight your legs and low, lock your knees that's how you will push elbows well the best uh, the best you can and the moment when your elbows about the level of the shoulders that's the time for you to go to the second deep and catch bells over your head uh, quite a challenging uh, fast of the exercise and you uh, working on your skill pretty much through your whole career to make it perfect and uh, well in my opinion uh, what is the most uh, important thing to do is again fast and straight your arm as fast as you can and again uh, after the bump is done and we go to the first dip uh, we should basically go down as fast as you can as we can and it's not enough to just start uh, moving down you should force a lockout in your arm by your triceps and that's actually uh, I think quite a new thing to teach uh, because uh, like previous uh, kind of classic uh, teaching was that arms should be relaxed uh, but if our arms will be completely relaxed then your, uh, arm will, your arm will straight not that fast as you want to and again you want to do it as fast as you can so that's why that's okay to use your triceps to force the lockout in your elbow so after the bump is done by your triceps basically you push your shoulder down and that's how you lock your elbow it's pretty much kind of a, a, a reverse strike we can say because uh, uh, when you when you throw the punch Marshall, so your fist going forward uh, but also you feel like loose and uh, in, in your elbow energy goes from from your body uh, so when we go to the second dip uh, we that's how we think about our shoulder so we don't want to really move our wrist up because that's where the bell and we don't want to press them so uh, I can say that it's quite uh, stable and still standing so what we do is by this contraction of triceps we lock the elbow and move the shoulder down and that's how upper body work complete well and then it will be next fast just uh, overhead fixation <clears throat> so again uh, first things that you do during the bump is you push your elbows your, as hard as you can by your legs and then uh, well you basically switch off the uh, uh, muscles of your lower body and let your body fall and you force it uh, by your triceps to lock your elbows and settle the shoulders down interesting thing to talk about is your heels this transaction from your position on your toes to position on the second dip on your heels and that's actually there's there are some misunderstanding about it because uh, as I said we need to get to the second dip fast we need to fall down and uh, uh, well one of the signs of it is noise that your heels do uh, but that's not the uh, not the case of the second dip 
uh, and it's not what you're really working on and that's not why you do this second dip to make a noise from your heels as I said you just want to get low and you want to keep your arms straight uh, but it doesn't matter how loud your heels and actually it even can be performed quite uh, quietly so show a few reps you can see it's I'm not really forcing my heels and throw them to the ground to make a noise I just want to make sure that uh, they will land on the ground but again I'm just uh, thinking mostly about how to straighten my, my arms and lock my elbows uh, and uh, some of the athletes they they do so so much work to drop these heels hard and actually they um, forget uh, even to make a bump uh, proper way because they actually thinking about their low legs how to apply them and how to really like throw the, the heels on the ground so don't think about it that much you basically even shouldn't think about you know, anything that under your knee uh, you shouldn't work with this muscles a lot and when you do bump I, I told you that uh, this muscle above your knee that's your quads uh, and your hips do the work and then when it's time to go to the second deep again you just kind of relax these muscles and drop down your land uh, your heels should land of course yeah you weigh, you should feel the weight on your heels but uh, again you just want to be low enough to straight your arms and tight that's the part that's the target I will demonstrate you a few repetitions Solid first dip, <coughs> elbows loaded, no weight on your legs. <coughs> Second dip. You see, that's actually another good exercise to do. You should be able to stop the bells on the bottom of the second dip. Your weight on your heels, your elbows low, shoulders settle. And then, nice and smooth, so it will be a next pass overhead fixation. <coughs> and you're ready for drop. main thing you want to do, you want to straight your arms even a little bit before you will feel the weight of the bells in front of you <coughs> and one more time okay to use your triceps to force lockout in your elbow uh, and it's different. We shouldn't press the bells. We shouldn't use the triceps to press the bells, but we should use the triceps to straight our arms. For the shoulders, elbow standing, first deep, second deep. You see, you're able to breathe. Shoulders settle, don't keep them high, arms straight. At the beginning, sometimes, uh, we can feel that we are not able to keep uh, insertion uh, from the rack to overhead fixation, or well, even this prefixation of the second dip. Somehow we lose it on our way up. And this actually happened by the same reason I mentioned you before, when you're trying to push the body of the bell by your forearm, by your shoulder. So again, if your bump looks the way that you uh, apply some force to the body, well, that's how insertion can be lost uh, for overhead fixation. But to avoid it, again, just imagine, well, not imagine, it's like, that's actually how it is, like the weight of the, way, of the bell uh, right above your wrist. 
and that's where you apply force. You push the handle and ballast follow. And if you will do it this way, you will never uh, uh, lose the insertion and the body of the bell will not bounce on your forearm. Just think about it, just lead the handle up. If you will think this way, uh, connection of the bell in your forearm and insertion will be st stable doesn't matter on pace that you uh, use. It's a very fast pace, it's a very slow pace, it will be stable. Just if you will lead the handle up, if you will not push the body of the bell. Important thing to say is direction of your second dip. And uh, it's better to talk about it with the side view. Uh, and if you imagine your second dip, so direction should go down not backward and uh, well some athletes uh, do it this way when after bump they basically even don't squat down they just move pelvis back and then move pelvis forward and that's how they get the overhead fixation but it's not the best thing to do and it's just too much work for your uh, you basically move the work from your legs to your core and to your back uh, and I think that's not the muscles that should this work so uh, when you go to the second dip, uh, make this direction down and make your legs work. So again, after the bump, squat, bend your legs, again control your posture and then straight your legs. So don't over bend your back when you go to the second dip, don't move it too far back. After the bump, squat down and then straight your legs. And when the second dip is done, uh, technical part of the whole jerk is done. Because when you are here and your arms straight, elbows locked, your shoulders settle, your stall is uh, staying on your heels, uh, the rest that you should do is just to straight your legs and get your rep. And that's how we move to the final phase of the second unit uh, toe fixation, phase number 11. What's important about toe fixation besides upper body? Because I um, mentioned about it before. Uh, and again, uh, when our elbows locked, when the shoulders settle, let's talk about posture. And it's better to show you a side view. So ideally to keep control on your pelvis. For overhead fixation, it's not great, not great when you let your pelvis go too far back. That's basically mean that uh, it's over tension on your low back and uh, no tension in low, at all in your abdominals. Uh, but it's nice to balance <coughs> um, your upper body. And that's why just apply your abdominals a little bit and not let your pelvis go so far backward. And of course that's uh, individual uh, anatomy and not uh, everyone has such a w um, wide open shoulders and that type of the uh, 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 posture uh, but at least we should work on it and when it's overhead fixation we should try to control our pelvis and ideally keep it under the shoulders not too far back and I will show you a few repetitions So a little bit control to your lobby from the front. Uh, well, also uh, position of your arms. Of course, uh, the, the, the space between your wrist should be less than between your shoulders. Right? We don't want to have over fixation, overhead fixation this way. Yeah, it's a little bit narrow. Uh, position of the bells. You don't want to keep bells right above your head as well as you don't want to have them outside. So from the front view, uh, your forearm should be right uh, on the middle of the body of the bell. So you basically kind of pull thumbs a little bit backward and elbows forward. This actually helps for your lockout as well. And uh, uh, if we talk about side view, uh, also you shouldn't move your arms 
too far back. So ideally, your arms located, well, on the space between your ears and your face. I can say in front of your temple. And your arms shouldn't be far than your ears. Then important to say also how we catch bells over the head and uh, uh, especially if uh, flexibility of upper body is good sometimes others push the bells way too far back right away and that's actually giving them hard time to stabilize and balance bells over the head so I recommend to catch the bells a little bit ahead uh, when you catch them on the second dip and then when you go to the final fixation well you uh, stabilize and move them a bit uh, further back uh, and actually good uh, drill for that is uh, well if you, if you have uh, problems with that then try to take a look on the bells when you catch them over the head then fixation let's I will show you a few repetitions so if you see the bells it means that it will never be too far backward and then when it's time for overhead fixation, you move the chin down and you look forward. Front view. It will take you probably a few training uh, and then you will realize that you even don't need to really look on the bells and you will feel their position and you will be able to look forward always that was a jerk portion of the long cycle and um, you can see that beside the technical uh, part of the of this moment there is also a flexibility part and uh, it's quite challenging to perform all these technical uh, phases flexibility wise to keep your shoulders settled down and elbows locked and arms close to each other same time and stay on your heels and keep pelvis under the shoulders at the same time so we need to work on it we need to do the stretching exercises all the time and uh, in description uh, below this video I put uh, the link for upper body stretching uh, that I usually do for actually many years and I uh, very grateful to these exercises I think that's why my technique improved a lot so every time you work on uh, your kettlebell sport technique when especially you do this jerk portion if you feel your upper body tight your shoulders tight mix it with uh, stretching exercises and that's how uh, you will get the best result and the most effective uh, training routine. Thank you for watching and see you next week.